Are you ready for Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous? Because I am. Guys, hello. What we did for Divinity Original Sin 2, covering all acts and maps, the same thing we're gonna do for Wrath of the Righteous. So, let's begin. We go straight forward to it, no mumbo-jumbo bullshit. I'm gonna tell you what you need to do from the freaking start till the end of Act 1 in this video. I'll explain you basic mechanics, where you should rest, how you should rest, what you should buy, what you should aim for. We we'll also cover every objective and everything you can think about that has to do with tutorial area and entire Kenabras in Act 1. After the linear part of tutorial area, you're gonna reach Nidholm, alright? And the first thing you wanna do before you proceed on is go to the trader, do the let's trade option and you're gonna sell all items that you basically don't need, all of those white items and similar garbage. And what you wanna buy is not items from this vendor, it's Scroll of Heroism, Bluers, Sleep, Grease, Protection from Evil, Chaos, Potions, alright? All of those consumables. And of course, your primary objective would be called Iron Ammunition for Len or Venduak, depends who you picked at the start. And here we are at Shield Maze. After you're done with your shopping, this is the first bigger dungeon in the game, the so-called tutorial area. If you play an unfair, it's a far more than a tutorial area. It's absolutely disgusting. But let's see what we should do here and what we should cover immediately from the start. You're gonna open up from here, you're gonna kill a uh, monitor lizard over here, it used to be ferocious, now it's just a monitor lizard. You're gonna end up all up to the corridor over here, wipe them all out. You're gonna pass through here, get some items over here, try to kill the cultist over there. After that, you're gonna proceed on all the way down over here, straight up down all the way to the basement. Now let me see where it is. The area where you're gonna get the first key. You need two keys for this area. So, you're gonna end up in this area over here. Your first key is on a cultist over here. All you need to do is sneak up, charge on him, and try to burst as fast as you can. Those are the fights you should do first. After that, you're gonna charge all the way down the map, all the way through up here. And this is where the second cultist is. Same tactics. Open the door, sneak up. Position your squad like this in front of him while sneaking, of course. Charge, kill, you get two keys. After you get two keys, you're gonna go to this room where three dredges are. Same tactics apply, alright? Sneak, go in, use vital strikes, use charges, alright? Burst those dredges and the door to the main bus is opened after this. Or better to say, the door to Hosilla is opened this one. Before you go to Hosilla, if you wasted way too many resources, you'll need to rest. What is the most important thing? The most important thing for you is to rest for exclusively 9 hours only. There is a reason behind why I'm saying that you should rest for 9 hours only. Alright, so you put a camp on, you go to rest, you re do not rest for recommended period, you're gonna rest for a day only, alright? The shortest rest available. It's very important because of Kenabras. You do not rest for two or three days, you rest like this. That's why we bought healing potions. Spells that can help you against Hosilla are Guidance, Resistance, some light so you can actually see her, Vigor on everyone. Vital Strike, Charges, Protection Against Evil is also very useful here. Heroism, Prayer, all of those spells you can use against her. Of course, do not forget to use uh, Bull Strength Potion, Dexterity Cat's Grace Potion, and so on. That's all that you can do in the tutorial area. Of, of course, those are all the spells you get during this first part. After we are done with Hosilla, which would be over here. How do you do Hosilla, by the way? You do it with a demon 
Mythic Path because that one is easier than Angel Mythic Path. Okay. Trust my words, Hosilla is not a joke, especially on Unfair. So, after we're done with Hosilla, your main objective after Hosilla is to grab Radiance. Alright. Radiance would be over here on the map. Remember this part. Cambions are guarding it. If you are unable to kill Cambions over here, which is probably the hardest fight in the game. This one. Alright. This one over here and this one over here are the farthest fi hardest fights in the entire act, in the entire shield maze map. So, you can sneak up from this door over here where Cambions are. Two are over here, two are over here. You're gonna sneak up, you're gonna pass up all the way to here, get down, and you'll need to kill four Cambions over here. That's a one fight less if you ignore them. Of course, you can come back later to kill them. Make sure to solve the puzzle. I don't want to spoil way too, way too much. And grab Radiance. After that, it's your choice if you are able to clear the entire map. Alright, and there's a lot of crazy mongrels over here and everywhere else, alright? Just to loot all. Try to do it. If you clear these cambions also, you can trigger the water elemental, which you can find in my videos of how to do it, even on Unfair. Alright, because water elemental is the hardest enemy on this map. And you're gonna drag his ass all the way over here. You have that video on my channel, as I said. You just circle around, equip everyone with bows and shoot. Repeat, shoot, run, shoot, and that's it. If you play on easier difficulties, of course, I believe on hard difficulty, you should only have one rest before Hosilla and you can easily clear the entire map. On unfair, it's extremely hard. When you're done, when you loot it all, when you check all out, go to the exit and there's a straight linear path that's gonna lead you to Kenabres. So, here we are at Kenabres, the best done act in gaming history, if you ask me. Ah, uh, you're gonna start at Defender's Heart. After you recruit Volgif and after you do all of conversations, uh, first quest will appear and the most important one for Volgif. So, you're gonna need to go to Tifling's Hideout. After Tifling's Hideout, you're gonna come back to Defender's Heart, speak with Volgif and Irabet again, and you're gonna end up in the Ancestries and Wonder Shop. Make sure you have huge perception. Pay attention on those perception checks. After you're done with Ancestries and Wonder Shop, you're gonna go back to Tifling's Hideout. No freaking rests. Not a single one. I'll tell you when to rest. To Tifling's Hideout, you're gonna finish over there with them. Get, grab the loot. Go back. And now you're gonna have Volgiev. And you're gonna have Finian. As a transforming weapon. After you're done... With these two maps and Volgif's quest, you're gonna transfer all the way down, you're gonna ignore Market Square, and you're gonna go straight to the Silken Thread Atelier. Why? There's a very easy fight with a mini boss over there, with solid loot and a good amount of experience. Still, you do not use rests. Even on Unfair. After you're done with all of that, you're gonna go to Tower of Estrod. Alright. And you're gonna try to do it with Greybor's help, and this is the only way to encounter Greybor if you rested only once or twice those mini short 9 hours rests. This is the only way to do it. You're gonna go to the Tower of Estrod, and you're gonna try to kill the boss over there. Greybor will help, because he's gonna spawn if you didn't rest way too much. It's very important that you rest once or twice if you wanna see this. After you're done with the boss in Tower of Estrod, a library will open, make sure that you have huge perception checks and some solid luck pick and loot everything there is on the map. Both outside and inside, or better to say outside of the library and inside of the library. If you're unable to do Tower of Estrod without resting, make sure to have one short rest before you enter Tower of Estrod. If you're able to do it without resting, then you're very, very good to go. After Tower of Estrod, you're gonna go back to Defender's Heart, trade, get items, scrolls, whatever you need. My recommendation for the entire tutorial area and Kenabres is to not buy a single freaking item in a game. All you need are scrolls. Grease, web, bluers, heroism, uh, prayer... All of those cheap scrolls, you're gonna get them 
and do not buy a single freaking item. Of course, you're gonna need a lot of healing potions also. The biggest problem that most of the players make for themselves when they play this game is that they spend money on items. Items are useless in Canabras. Scrolls are way much better. Potions are way much better. Pull strength, cat's dexterity. Protection from evil, from protection from chaos, sea invisibility, grease, web. All of that you're gonna need for the market square. So, after you're done trading with everyone, alright? And after you do all of those quests and everything, free experience and so on, and when you do arrest, you gotta go to the market square. Market square is the first bigger, or better to say, huge map that you'll encounter after the tutorial area. And the only huge area in entire Act 1. In Market Square, you'll be able to acquire Ember over here, where the houses are. You're gonna roam around and find her, I don't wanna spoil way, way too much for you. And you're gonna encounter everything over here, from undead to cultists, demons, bosses, hidden bosses, everything that you can think about. So what you should do on your first visit to Market Square, you need to clear the entire map as you can see it here with only one 9 hour rest. Why 9 hour rest? Because we prolong defender's heart attack as much as we can, you know, there's gonna be attack on your end and you wanna be level 4 or level 5 when it happens, or better to say you wanna clear all the maps in Canabras before it happens. What is the route that you should take on Market Square? You're gonna start from over here, you're gonna clear everything there is over here, you do not enter the house with a swarm. And I repeat again, you do not enter the house. Make sure you pass all perception checks, monitor them over here. On info, you'll see if you fail them or succeed. When you want to discover hidden objects. After you're done with this square of the map, you're gonna transfer to this square of the map. You're gonna do everything there is over here, and you're gonna go slowly towards Temple of Desna. Once you speak with the Inquisitor, the quest that you need to do is over here, you need to see invisibility, alright, with Ramian, and you get free XP. You talk inside with NPCs in the Temple of Desna, and then you're gonna go and start clearing over here, all the way up here, all of this. You're gonna clear it out, everything there is, and you're gonna do a short rest. After you do the short rest, you're gonna come over here and you're gonna trigger the fight with Shadows and Undead. Over here. This is the only way to do it. You're gonna put Scylla over here on a passage to tank and you're gonna put all of your casters around so you can burst them out. Make sure to use Finian to damage those Shadows. My recommendation for Finian is probably to make him as a longbow or a Great sword depends what you play with, of course, and try to burst those shadows as fast as you can while your casters will burst the lesser undead over here. After you're done with this, you're gonna go straight up over here and you're gonna kill a necromancer. Once all of this is done, we're gonna slowly transfer to the new part over here where you can scale up, I mean, where you can pass down, and you're gonna clear all, all the fights over here, including this one, with cultists, make sure you target Illusionist and Evoker first, drag those enemies all the way back to the soldiers that are waiting over here if you can't do it on your own, then you're gonna clear all of this, and then you're gonna enter inside and kill Brimorak in this house. How do we kill Brimorak? You're gonna sneak, you're gonna use vital strikes, and you're gonna use all spells on him while ignoring all other demons inside the house until you kill the Brimorak, because you don't want a fireball in your face early on. It's gonna one-shot your entire team. After you're done with the entire map, what's gonna remain? It's gonna remain this house here with swarms that you're gonna ignore. There's gonna remain a Vrak that you're gonna set free from this house that you're gonna ignore. And there's gonna be a shadow demon inside the basement of this house that you're gonna ignore. When you're done, exit the map. i loot everything there is, even if you're gonna be mega encumbered. Do it and loot everything there is. Exit the area. Once you exit the area, the next location that you should immediately go to, even if you are exhausted, fatigued, 
mega encumbered, low on health, everything everything bad that you can imagine. You're gonna reach the Black Wing Library to save the storyteller. What will it do for you? You're gonna use a trickster mythic pot, unlock a trickster mythic pot, and you're gonna loot everything in the Black Wing Library. Well, storyteller will have an option for you to teleport into Defender's Heart. And you're gonna rest without resting, and you're gonna travel fast to Defender's Heart without traveling if you go straight from Market Square to Blackling Library while Mega Encumbered. And here we are at Defender's Heart again with a Storyteller. Do all conversations with every single NPC, sell gear, acquire money, buy, again, scrolls and potions, and off you go. If you rested only three times, nine hours rests, Defender's Heart Attack won't happen, which means we can go and grab Diran. So, from Defender's Heart, we're gonna travel straight to Arandea's party house, and we're gonna help Diran defend the party house, and we're gonna get a new companion. Once you acquire Diran, you're gonna go straight to Gwerm Mansion. No rests. I repeat, no rests. You rest only if you have to. That's why you have millions of potions and millions of scrolls that you bought from traders instead of items. Do not waste money on items. Inside the Gwerm's Mansion is Camellia's Quest. Try to do it without the rest. If you must, rest only once. Nine hour rest. After Gwerm's Mansion, once you do Camellia's Quest and you loot a lot of good things and you acquire money and so on, you do not go back to Defender's Heart. You're gonna go with Diran straight to Pitaxian Wine Cellar. Why is Diran important for Pitaxian Wine Cellar? Very simple. He's extremely important because he deals damage to undead with channel negative energy. There are four whites inside Pitaxian Wine Cellar. How do you deal with them? With Volgif. Volgif is your tank. How is he your tank? Very simple. You're gonna cast Mirror Image on Volgif, Bluer, and Displacement. And he's gonna take tank all of those whites while Diran and the rest of your party nuke them down. This is the only way to deal with whites, because they deal negative level damage, alright? They're extremely hard to kill, have that in mind. Wolgif needs to tank them with all buffs applied on him. After you're done with Pitexian Wine Cellar, you're gonna go all the way down, still if you can, without a rest, if you must rest only once. And you're gonna go straight to Topaz Solutions. You're gonna do everything there is over there. It's a mini map, very small map. And you're gonna transfer immediately after that to Tyrabed Residence. Topaz Solutions and Tyrabed Residence are the two hardest fights in Kenabres. One is with the Alchemist, the other one is with a Succubus. Extremely, extremely hard fights, especially on Unfair. If you play on easier difficulties, you should be able to hit them without way too many buffs. If you play on Unfair, God help you. It took me a lot of tries to do it, considering I was rushing and delaying the entire attack on the end. Once we're done with Topa Solutions and Tyrabed Residents, we are done with the entire Kenebres and we did all maps without Defender's Heart Attack. It never happened. Alright. Then you're gonna travel back to Defender's Heart, sell everything, get all of that free experience and so on, have a short rest, and after that, for sure, Defender's Heart Attack will happen. The attack on the end, how do you defend? Camellia is the MVP, uh, considering the attack on the end. Why? It's very simple to defend with Camellia. All you need to do is cast Entangles and uh, Sickening Entangles on the entire map. She's gonna slow everyone down. Soldiers will deal with enemies very easy. All you need to do is kill uh, enemies alchemists. Do it with ranged attacks. Do not exit the area. Or just stand beside or behind soldiers and off you go. No one can do a fucking thing to you, alright? As long as you cover the entire map in entangles, in webs, in grease. Okay, you have Volji for that, you have Camellia, you have Nenio. After we're done with Defender's Heart attack and after we defended the Defender's Heart, Grey Garrison map 
will finally open and it's time to finish with Act 1. Again, and I'll repeat it again for the last time, do not buy items before you go to, to Grey Garrison. Buy scrolls, a lot of grease, a lot of webs, a lot of blesses, prayers, heroisms, potions, bull strength, cat's grace, and so on. Here we are at Grey Garrison. Grey Garrison dungeon consists out of multiple layers, okay? Two big ones and around two or three small maps, alright? This is the very first big one that you'll encounter after the basement. What do you want to do with uh, this map for the start? You want to clear everything you can, try to do it without a rest, with one short rest if need be, alright? And only after you're done with the entire map over here, after you loot everything there is, you're gonna transfer upstairs to the second floor. On the second floor, there are two extremely disgusting fights. Alright. The only fight you actually need to do, what is a bust, is with Jesslyn over here in this room. Alright. How you can do it, if you have help of the Inquisitors, then they gonna tank the demons while you kill Jesslyn. If not, make sure to cast a lot of webs, entangles and greases over here on the door and juke them all out until they're all dead. Of course, all of this depends on the difficulty. Why kill Jesslyn? Because he has the key to open the door over here so you can proceed and go to the third floor. What you need to make sure in Grey Garrison, you need to make sure that you have high perception and you check non-stuff for those hidden secret areas and so on. There is one puzzle on the bottom floor, on the first floor, alright, that you can also find on my channel and how to do it, but the rewards are poor to be honest, it, it's after the fight with a succubus. Other than that, there is one more very disgusting fight on the first floor with the alchemist. Again, same tactic supply, no matter the difficulty. Hug the door, cast entangles, cast grease, cast web, blurs, displacements, mirror image, tank, hold the door, burst with ranged and with casters. On the third floor, there is not much to say. There is a fight with a very specific boss. I mean, two bosses, one mini boss and one main boss. And after that, you can acquire your first mythic pot. That will be all I can say about Act 1. That's the entire Act 1 guide. And again, I'll repeat. Do not waste money. Rule number one. Rule number two, when you waste money, waste it on scrolls and potions. Rule number three, use entangles, webs and grease to delay enemies, to crowd control them, so you can easily kill them. Rule number four, do not try frontal assaults without buffs, even on weakest enemies. They're strong as hell, it doesn't matter what difficulty you play on, on unfair. You can only get one shot it, for example. Same happens with hard. I guess same applies with core, but I never tried. Rule number five. Short rests. And only short rests. Nine hours rests. Heal up with potions. Healing potions. Rule number six. High trickery, high perception is a must on at least one character in your team. That will be all that I can say about this act. It's the best done acting game in history, it's so freaking tactical, everything was crafted well, all encounters, everything is so bloody balanced, alright, it's like a masterpiece of all acts in gaming history. There is nothing better than Tutorial Area and Canabras in the history of CRPG gaming. I didn't want to spoil way too much with this guide, I told you. How to do it, explain some simple mechanics and how you should rush and why you should rush and where you should rush and the order of maps you need to pick. Next video we're gonna transfer to Act 2 and so on until we finish every act there is and we make every guide there is for every single act in the game. As always, thanks for watching. 